Jesus kid. I believe the good news, so I'm a Jesus kid. A Jesus kid, I'm a Jesus kid. God can use me too, cause I'm a Jesus kid. A Jesus kid, I'm a Jesus kid. and girls, Pastor Steve here, and welcome to Kids Church. Today, boys and girls, we're going to continue learning about the Bible, God's Word. Now, do you remember, boys and girls, that the Bible is one unified story about one person? Do you remember who that was? That's right. It's about Jesus, the Christ, the Son of God. Well, today, boys and girls, before we even get into our Bible study, there's something very important that we need to do. Do you know what it is? That's right. We need to pray. So why don't we ask God to bless our time together? So let's bow our heads and let's close our eyes. Dear Jesus, we just thank you for today, Lord. We thank you for giving us another day, Lord, to live for you and for another opportunity that you've given to us to learn more of you and of your word. We pray, Lord, that you would just open up our ears and open up our hearts and that you would speak to us today. We ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, boys and girls, we've learned so much about the Bible together. What do you remember about God's word? Well, do you remember that the Bible is made up of 66 different books and it's divided into two sections? Do you remember what those sections are called? The Old Testament and the New Testament. That's right. And do you remember how many authors God used to write his book, the Bible? That's right, over 40 different authors, boys and girls. And we have been learning about all of these authors and their different occupations. Let's see if we can remember some of them. First, we learned about the shepherds. Do you remember the shepherds, boys and girls? They were Moses and David and Hosea and Amos. And then we learned about the two that were fishermen. Do you remember who they were? They were two of Jesus' disciples. They were Peter and John. And then we learned about one of the authors who was a tax collector. Do you remember who that was? It was another one of Jesus' disciples. That's right, it was Matthew. Then last week, we learned about the author who was a doctor who wrote two books. Do you remember who that was? That's right, it was Luke. Great job, everyone. Well, today, boys and girls, we're going to learn about another one of the authors of the Bible. This author was a military general. As a matter of fact, boys and girls, he led a large army against a city that had a humongous wall that surrounded it. Do you know who that was, boys and girls? Well, here's another clue. The book is named after him. Have you guessed it yet? Mr. Wallace, do you think you could help us out with this? Well, let's see here. You said he was a military general. Hmm, he led an army against a city with a large wall that surrounded it, and the book is named after him. Hmm. Well, this is just a guess, but I do believe that it is Joshua. There is a book named Joshua, and in it there is a story about a city named Jericho who had a large wall that surrounded it. And yeah, Joshua was in charge. I do believe it is Joshua. Good job, Mr. Wallace. It was Joshua. Mr. Wallace, what else do you know about Joshua? Well, let's see. His name means the Lord is salvation. And Joshua was one of the 12 spies Moses sent to explore the promised land. He was in charge when the children of Israel crossed the Jordan River on dry ground, defeated Jericho. 
and when the sun stood still. You can read all about that in the book of Joshua. It's mighty, mighty impressive. He also encouraged the children of Israel to serve the Lord. That is what Joshua and his family did. Well, thank you, Mr. Wallace. Wow, boys and girls. God used so many different people to write the different books of the Bible. He used shepherds, fishermen, a tax collector, and a doctor. And now we've learned about a military general. Well, boys and girls, as we continue learning about the Bible, we're going to learn about some more of the men that God used to write his book. But for now, boys and girls, let's continue by reviewing the books of the Bible. Let's learn the books of the Bible, the books that you should know. Let's learn where they are, hide them in your heart. Let's yeah. learn the books of the Bible. Boys and girls, so far we have learned about the law, the books of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And remember that these five books were all written by Moses. And do you remember that the law was the foundation for Christ? Remember how it tells us in Galatians chapter 3, verse 24, that the law was our guardian until Christ came. And then we moved on from the law and we learned about the books of history. Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther. And these books here, boys and girls, were all about the preparation for Christ. Remember that we learned in 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 23 and 24, that Israel, the one nation on earth whom God went to redeem for himself as a people and to make for himself a name, that was the books of history were all about the preparation for Christ. 
And then we moved on to the books of poetry, the books of Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and the Song of Solomon. And those books were all about our desire for Christ. And in Psalms chapter 73 and verse 25, it says, there was no one upon earth that a desire besides you. Well, today, boys and girls, we're going to learn about the prophetical books. There are 17 books in total that deal with the prophets. Now, these books are sometimes divided into two sections. First section called the major prophets and the second section called the minor prophets. Well, today, boys and girls, we're going to start with that first section. We're going to talk about the major prophets. And there are five of these books. They are Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, and Daniel. Now, the prophetical books talk about our expectation for Christ. And we read about that in Daniel chapter 9 and verse 25, where it says, Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the command to restore and build Jerusalem until the Messiah, the Prince, all about the coming of Jesus Christ. And as we get into these books, boys and girls, we're going to see how these things were prophesied. And then when we get into the New Testament, boys and girls, we're going to see how Christ came. But until we get there, boys and girls, let's spend just a few minutes and let's learn about the prophetical books. Isaiah, Jeremiah, and then Lamentations. Ezekiel, Daniel, without hesitation comes Hosea, Joel, and Amos. Then Obadiah, Jonah, Mike, and Nam, Habakkuk, Zephaniah. Then just three more tiny little guys, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. These are the prophets, they're right on fire. They're in two sections called the Major and the Minor. They bring God's messages. Judgment, instruction, aftermath, bright, bright future if you're walking on a godly path. Me and those prophet could wear you out quick. From sleeping with the lions to staring at a brick. Reading about the prophets, prophesying to the government. Teaches us important stuff about the new covenant. And how the Messiah's gonna pay for our crime. Let's go through the list one more. Time. Isaiah, Jeremiah, and then Lamentations. Ezekiel, Daniel, without hesitation, comes Hosea, Joel, and Amos. Then Obadiah, Jonah, Mike, and Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah. Then just three more tiny little guys, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. They're in two sections called the major and the minor. Boys and girls, let's begin today by looking at the book of Isaiah. Isaiah is the 23rd book in the Old Testament, and it's the first prophetical book, the first book of the major prophets division. Now, Isaiah is the writer of this book, and he's also a prophet of God. Now, Isaiah was a prophet in Judah, which is part of the southern kingdom of Israel. And Isaiah lived at a time when the northern kingdom of Israel was destroyed by the nation of Assyria. Now, Isaiah spoke God's words during the time and the reigns of the kings Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, who were all kings of Judah. Now, Isaiah spent most of his life in Jerusalem, but Isaiah was a prophet of God, which means that he spoke God's messages to his people. Most of Isaiah's messages, boys and girls, were messages of judgment. Remember that he was a prophet of God, and these are God's words to his people. And remember that Isaiah lived in a time when the northern kingdom of Israel was captured and destroyed by the Assyrians. He saw how God protected the southern kingdom of Judah from that nation of Assyria, but he knew that someday Judah would fall 
and they were going to fall to the Babylonians. So he wrote God's words about all of these events, but you know what he also wrote about, boys and girls? He also wrote about the coming Savior. And so Isaiah was a prophet during the reigns of King Uzziah and Jotham. We see that in Isaiah's chapter 1 through chapter 6. Then he was a prophet under the reign of King Ahaz between chapter 7 and 14. And then under King Hezekiah in chapters 15 through 39. And then when we get to the second half of the book of Isaiah, we now see God's messages of comfort for his people. Isaiah told God's promises of his people, of their return to the land and the coming Savior. Remember, boys and girls, that this was all part of God's plan. For it would be in this land, the land that God would send his people, and through God's people, that the Jews, that the promised Messiah, the promised Savior, would be born. Isaiah also told about the future glory of Israel. It was all about God's promises to free his people and to bring them into the land again. Talked about the coming of God's servant, Jesus Christ, the Messiah. And you could read about that in Isaiah chapter 52 and 53. And we'll talk about Isaiah 53 in just a few minutes. And then you can read about the future glory of God's people in Isaiah chapter 54 through 66. The book of Isaiah, boys and girls, talks about a lot of things. But after Isaiah, do you know what book comes, boys and girls? That's right, it's the book of Jeremiah. Now, Jeremiah is the 24th book in the Old Testament, and it's the second prophetical book, and it's the second book in the division of the major prophets. Now, the book of Jeremiah, boys and girls, doesn't follow the order in which the events are written. Now, Jeremiah... And his assistant, Barak, wrote Jeremiah's messages, probably, boys and girls, on a long scroll. And what probably happened is that while writing down one message, Jeremiah would be reminded of another one of the messages that he spoken earlier before. And then this earlier message would then be added to the scroll where he had left off writing. The mixing of this early and late messages, it makes it kind of difficult to know which order his messages were actually given. But what we need to remember is that Jeremiah was a prophet. He was also a prophet in Judah, boys and girls, which is part of the southern kingdom. And Jeremiah spoke God's words for over 40 years, boys and girls, beginning with the reign of Josiah. And he continued to speak God's words even in Egypt, where some of God's people went after the fall of Jerusalem. Now, other prophets during this time were Habakkuk, Zephaniah, they were in Judah, Ezekiel and Daniel, who were in Babylon, and perhaps Nahum, who was probably in Nineveh. Now, Jeremiah spoke of the coming judgment as well, too. And he spoke to the nation of Judah during its hardest times. You see, boys and girls, in the book of Jeremiah, the people worshipped idols and lived lives that didn't please God. And because of that, God promised to judge the people because they did not obey him. And so for 40 years, God spoke to the people through Jeremiah, warning them of the coming destruction. And boys and girls, as Jeremiah shared with the people and he spoke to them and he told them to repent, the Bible tells us that Jeremiah wept a lot. And so one of the nicknames that Jeremiah has, he's called the weeping prophet. And we're going to see how that ties in to Jesus in just a few minutes. Now, after the book of Jeremiah comes the book of Lamentations. Now, Lamentations is the 25th book in the Old Testament, and it's the third prophetical book, as well as the third book of the major prophets. Now, the word Lamentations means to lament or to cry out loud. 
You see, boys and girls, Jeremiah cried out loud about the destruction of the temple and of the city of Jerusalem. Lamentations, boys and girls, is not the name of the prophet like Isaiah and Jeremiah, but rather the name of the book that was most likely written by Jeremiah. The book of Lamentations is the saddest book in the Old Testament. Here, Jeremiah writes his words of sorrow after the fall of Jerusalem. And even though he was sad, boys and girls, Jeremiah still talked about God and his goodness. And so we've looked at Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations. Do you know what book comes after the book of Lamentations, boys and girls? Well, it's the book of Ezekiel. And Ezekiel is the 26th book in the Old Testament and the fourth book of the prophetical books and also the fourth book in the major prophet division. Can you guess who the writer of the book of Ezekiel is, boys and girls? It's Ezekiel the prophet. Do you know what his name means? Well, Ezekiel's name, it means God strengthens. And Ezekiel was strengthened by God for the ministry that God gave him. Now, Ezekiel was a prophet to the Jewish captives in Babylon. And Ezekiel's message to the Jewish captives was that their captivity was a result of their sin. And before they could hope to return to their land, they must return to their Lord. You see, their sin caused them to be taken into captivity, and before they could be restored and brought back to their new land, their hearts had to be right, and they had to come back to God. Now, other prophets during this time were Jeremiah, who remained with the Jews in Jerusalem, Daniel, who lived in the court of the rulers in Babylon. Remember that Daniel was taken to Babylon nine years earlier than Ezekiel. And Ezekiel and Daniel were probably about the same age, while Jeremiah was a little bit older. Remember, Jeremiah had been a prophet for about 30 years in Jerusalem when Ezekiel was taken to Babylon. Now, boys and girls, not all the people of Judah were taken to Babylon at the same time. For a while, Jeremiah stayed in Jerusalem warning the people who remained there about the city's coming destruction. And Ezekiel was one of the captives taken to Babylon. Now, Ezekiel's job, boys and girls, was to give God's word. His job was to give God's word to the prisoners who were in exile. And many of the events in this book are in visions that God showed to Ezekiel. And these visions that God gave to him were pictures to Ezekiel so that he would be able to know what to tell the people. And as we go from Ezekiel, the next book that we come to, boys and girls, is the book of Daniel. Now, do you guys know who Daniel was? Do you remember who Daniel was? I do. And Daniel is the 27th book in the Old Testament. And he is the fifth of the prophetical books. And he's the fifth book of the major division and the last book in the major prophet division. Now, the book of Daniel is named after its main person, the main character here. Do you know who that is? Yeah, it's Daniel, good job. Now, boys and girls, through Daniel, God revealed more than any prophet before him the hidden things of the future. And we are seeing more and more that Daniel's great prophecies are history that were written before it actually happened. Now, if you study the book of Daniel, you're going to see how it helps you understand the book of Revelation, that great prophetic book at the end of the Bible. And we'll get there in a little while. Now, Daniel was a prophet in Babylon. Unlike the other prophets, Daniel dealt with more with the Gentiles who were the non-Jewish people than with his own Jewish nation. And during this time, Jeremiah was in Jerusalem and Ezekiel was in Babylon. And do you remember the stories and the things that happened in the book of Daniel, boys and girls, besides the prophecies that God had given to him about the return of Jesus? 
Well, we see Daniel being taken into captivity with some of his friends. Remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Remember we see Daniel being thrown into the lion's den? We see those three Hebrew boys being thrown into the fire. We also saw Daniel interpreting a message by a hand that appeared and began to write on the wall. There was a lot of things that happened in the book of Daniel. And when we come back, boys and girls, we're going to look at how we see Jesus in the books of Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, and Daniel. Hey kids, let's sing the B-I-B-L-E. The B-I-B-L-E, yes that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E, the B-I-B-L-E. Faster now. The B I B L E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God. The B I B L E. The B I B L E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God. The B I B L E. Faster now. The B I B L E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God. The B I B L E. The B I B L E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone. One more time. The B I B L E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God. The B I B L E. The B I B L E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God. The B I B L E. Yeah. I need you to soften my heart and break me apart. I need you to open my eyes and see that you're shaping my life. All I am, I serve. Trust what you say that you're good and your love is great. I'm broken inside, I give you my life. I need you. Soften my heart and break me apart. I need you to pierce through the dark and cleanse every part of me. And all I am, and I serve. Trust what you say, that you're good and your love is great. I'm broken inside, I give you my Cause I may be weak, but your spirit's strong in me, and my flesh may fail, but my God, you never will. Cause I may be weak, but your spirit's strong in me, and my flesh may fail, and my God, you never will. So give me faith to trust what you say 
that you're good and your love is great i'm broken inside i give you my life because i may be weak but your spirit strong in me and my flesh may fail but my god you never will i may be weak but your spirit strong in me my flesh may fail my god you never will Boys and girls, remember that the Bible, it's one book with one unified story that points to Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And the Old Testament, do you remember, boys and girls, that it talks about the anticipation of Jesus Christ. And these books that we're going to cover today talk about the coming of Jesus. Now, it's time to get into the section that we call our scarlet thread, where we look to see Jesus Christ throughout the entire Bible. Remember that from the very beginning, boys and girls, God had a plan, a plan to redeem his people from their sins. Now, I don't know about you, but I am so thankful that God had a plan to redeem me from my sins so that I could spend eternity in heaven with him. And when I asked Jesus to forgive me of my sins, he came into my heart, he washed all of my sins away, and I have the promise that God has given to me of eternity in heaven. Well, as we look throughout the first 17 books, boys and girls, that we have covered, we can see Jesus in many different ways. We see him as the Passover lamb in Exodus. We see him as the captain of our salvation in Joshua. In Nehemiah, we saw him as the rebuilder of our walls. In Psalms, we saw him as our shepherd. In Proverbs and Ecclesiastes, he was our wisdom. And then in the Song of Solomon, he was our loving bridegroom. Well, remember that we see Jesus throughout the entire Bible. And the next book that we come to is the book of Isaiah. Now, in Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 6, one of the key verses in the book of Isaiah, it says, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Isaiah, boys and girls, had a lot to say about the coming Savior. Isaiah talked about his birth, his family, Jesus being empowered by the Holy Spirit. It talked about his characteristics, what Jesus would be like. It also talked about his suffering and his death. And Isaiah also talked about Jesus' glorious reign. If we look back at Isaiah chapter 53, Isaiah here explains the reason for the Messiah's death. He explains why Jesus needed to die. He needed to die because of our sin. And he explains that Jesus would take the punishment for each of our sins. Remember, boys and girls, that Jesus, he never sinned. Jesus lived a perfect life from the time that he was born to the time that he died. But because of his love for you and his love for me, you know what he did? He took upon himself the punishment for each of our sins. And as we look at the book of Isaiah, boys and girls, we see Jesus as that suffering servant, the one who suffered and died, not because he had to, but because of his love for you and for me. And as we move on from the book of Isaiah, we transition into the book of of Jeremiah. And in Jeremiah, we see Jesus as well too. And in Jeremiah chapter 7, verses 23 and 24, two of the key verses in the book of Jeremiah, it says this, but this is what I commanded them saying, obey my voice 
and I will be your God, and you shall be my people, and walk in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well with you. Yet they did not obey or incline their ear, but followed the counsels and the dictates of their evil hearts, and went backward and not forward. Boys and girls, Jeremiah's message to the people was to obey God, obey him, walk in his ways. But yet the people did not obey God. They, choose, they chose to do what they wanted to do. They walked after what was in their hearts, their evil hearts. They walked backwards and not forward. And as we look at the book of Jeremiah, in chapter 23, Jeremiah told the people of a coming shepherd who was going to come and to rule and to help his people. Jeremiah even told them his name. He says, it is the Lord our righteousness, which is another name, boys and girls, for Jesus. Jeremiah told them that the coming shepherd, that Jesus was going to bring in a new agreement between God and his people. And when Jesus came, that was going to complete the promise that was given to Abraham and to Moses and to David. What wonderful news that this is, isn't it, boys and girls? You know, boys and girls, the promise of a Savior can be found in the Old Testament many years before Jesus actually came to this earth. And remember that God had a plan for his people. And remember that when Jesus makes a promise, that when God makes a promise, that his promises always come true. And now as you study the book of Jeremiah, you're going to see many different things. And one of the main themes of Jesus throughout the book of Jeremiah is Jesus being our righteous branch. And so as we look at the book of Jeremiah, that's what we see Jesus as, the righteous branch. Now, from Isaiah, the suffering servant, to Jeremiah, the righteous branch, comes the next book, the book of Lamentations. And in Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 and 23, it says, Through the Lord's mercies we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Now, even though the book of Lamentations, boys and girls, tells us about some very unhappy events, we also see happiness because of God's faithfulness. Boys and girls, God is faithful, and he was faithful to his people, and he's going to be faithful to us. And through the book of Lamentations, we see that God kept his promise to send Jesus to be our Savior. And do you know, boys and girls, that when we believe in Jesus, the sadness caused by our sins is taken away, and God replaces that with joy. He takes away that sadness and gives us joy, boys and girls. And remember how we talked about Jeremiah weeping for the people, weeping because they made decisions to walk away from God and not to follow him. And Jeremiah, we saw as a weeping prophet. Well, here, boys and girls, in Lamentations, we see Jesus as our weeping prophet, one who desires us to follow after him, one who desires to allow him to be Lord of our life. And when we don't, boys and girls, Jesus is sad. He wants to take away that sin, and he wants to replace it with joy. And so Lamentations, we see Jesus as our weeping prophet. And then the very next book, boys and girls, is the book of Ezekiel. And in the book of Ezekiel, boys and girls, in chapter 36, verses 24 through 26, it says this, For I will take you from among the nations, gather you out of all countries, and bring you into your own land. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you and you shall be clean, and I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. 
I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. Now, boys and girls, Ezekiel is a very interesting book. There are a lot of prophecies in this book. It talks about the future, it talks about the return of Jesus. It talks about the great tribulation and all of these things, boys and girls, ties into the book of Revelation when we get there. And what Jesus is saying, what Ezekiel is saying here in this, these verses is that one day God is going to bring his people from being scattered and bring them back to the land. But at this time, boys and girls, when Ezekiel is prophesying, the people are scattered. They're captives in foreign lands, and they were unhappy as prisoners being far away from their home. And hearing the prophets tell them that their captivity was punishment from their sin, it really didn't cheer them up either. Now, Ezekiel told the people that they would be rescued by a king one day who would also be their shepherd. The people hoped that it was going to happen very soon. It was hard for them to wait. They couldn't understand that the promised king was not only for one nation and one time in history, he was going to be the king for all people for all time. And do you know who that promised king was, boys and girls? That's right, it was Jesus. And Jesus wasn't going to lead an army against Israel's enemies as they had expected and wanted. Jesus' kingdom, boys and girls, is a very special kind of kingdom. And one day, boys and girls, those of us who have asked Jesus to be Lord of our lives, we're going to be able to be in his kingdom. Now, the people who heard Ezekiel's message, they never got to see that kingdom and those prophecies come true. But today, boys and girls, we know that Jesus, the Prince of Peace, the shepherd that's in Ezekiel's message, we know that he is going to come back and to set up his kingdom here on earth one day. And then one day, boys and girls, we're going to be in heaven with him in that heavenly kingdom that's going to last forever and ever for all of eternity. And when we read and we study the book of Ezekiel, boys and girls, we see Jesus as the Son of Man. Now, after the book of Ezekiel, boys and girls, comes the last book that we're going to talk about, and that's the book of Daniel. And Daniel has some very interesting things that he talks about, even though we know about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and the fiery furnace, and we know about Daniel and the lion's den. There was much more to this book. And in Daniel chapter 2 and verse 44, it says, And in the days of these kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. It shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Now you see, boys and girls, God gave Daniel visions and dreams and prophecies. And some of these visions that God gave to Daniel showed him facts about Jesus. Daniel told the people about the coming Messiah, about Jesus' coming. And he told them who would give his life for them in Jerusalem. Remember, Daniel was all the way back in Babylon, many hundreds of years before Jesus actually came. And Daniel was telling them about Jesus who was going to come and to give his life for them in a very specific place called Jerusalem. And those of us who have read through the Bible and have learned about Jesus, we know that those facts actually came true. And Daniel also was able to tell about God who would give Jesus a kingdom and all of the people on earth one day would serve him and that God's kingdom would never, ever, ever be destroyed. You see, boys and girls, as you read through the book of Daniel, not only does it give us some very practical things to live by, but it also gives us a hope, a hope about the future, about the coming of the Son of Man. And that's what, as you read Daniel, that's how we see Jesus. We see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven. Now, boys and girls, 
Remember, the Bible, one unified book with one unified story all about Jesus. And these first five books, the first five books in the prophetical section, the five major prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Daniel, and that fifth book, Lamentations, boys and girls, it all talks about the coming of Jesus. Isaiah, how Jesus was going to come and to die for us, our suffering servant. And Jeremiah, our shepherd, the one who is going to come and bring us righteousness, the righteous branch. In Lamentations, the one who weeped over our sin, our weeping prophet. Ezekiel, the one who's going to be coming, the son of man. And Daniel, how he was going to be coming in the clouds. Boys and girls, the Bible, it's all laid out before us. And it all tells us about Jesus. Do you see it, boys and girls? Have you noticed that we see Jesus in everything? I'm so thankful for God for giving us his words and for allowing us to have that hope because of the truth that is given in his word. Well, why don't we pray, boys and girls, and thank God for the time that he's given us today. Father, we thank you, Lord, again for the time that you've given to us to be able to come together, to open up your word, to learn more of you, to see Jesus, Father, from Genesis all the way through Daniel so far. And Lord, how your word, God, is truth. And those things, Lord, that you said were going to happen, we see them starting to happen as we're opening up your word. And we know, God, that one day we're going to see the rest of it be fulfilled. We thank you, Lord, that we can rely and that we can trust in you and in your word. Father, may you bless the rest of our day. Bless each one of us until we can be able to meet again. We love you. We thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, boys and girls, God bless you, and I'll see you next time. Bye.